Hi guys, it's Matt here from pilotpracticeexams.com where you can pass your exams in half the time. So let me get into the uh, altitude calculator and the I've explained in video one above and you can go and watch that if you want to learn how the calculator works and it's going to save you a lot of time because it's going to allow you to cross check your numbers as you're doing lots and lots of calculations to learn these formulas. Now this lesson is going to learn with um, uh, deal with how you need to calculate this and why you need to know it. So let's take a quick look at why you need to know it, which I'm sure some people will know, but you can probably skip ahead about 30 or 45 seconds if you do. So here we go. Um, basically, theoretically, if that's your normal takeoff distance on a normal runway on a normal day at QNH1013 at sea level, as we get low temperatures and high pressures, our performance increases because the air is more dense. Therefore, we can get off sooner. Now here's the problem. There's no problem with getting off sooner. The problem is this. On high temp days, when there's low pressure and the air's less dense, or when you're taking off from high elevation runways because the air's less dense, our, uh, or a combination of those, our takeoff performance can end up out here or even out here, and we can crash into trees and kill ourselves. So we need to know how to calculate this and we need to know the effect it will have on our aircraft as we take off, particularly when we've got heavy aircraft, particularly when we're at altitudes, really hot days, low pressure, or combinations, or when we have um, marginal length runways. So let's get into it. Here's the elevation or altitude. Um, this is the steps you take to work out density altitude. Now, when we want to work out pressure height or pressure altitude, it's very, very simple. All we do, I'll do it down here. I've got the formula down here for you. There's the formula there, which we showed you in the previous video. It's just your elevation plus, and then you've got to have in brackets, 1013 minus Q and H. Now, the reason you have that is, what we're trying to do is work out what is the effect of pressure. So we want to go a standard pressure minus the the actual pressure for today. So if the pressure's high, we're going to end up with a negative number there. Okay? If the pressure's low, then we're going to end up with 1013, say minus 1000, we're going to end up with 13 times 30. Now what's the significance of the 30? Okay. For every one for every 30 feet in altitude that we go up from sea level, Okay, one, that reduces pressure by one hectopascal. Now, why? Because the air is, um, the air down near the surface is at higher pressure than the air higher because it's got the weight of all that other air sitting on top of it. Okay, so it's one hectopascal more pressure every 30 feet because of all the air that's sitting on top of it. Now, what, let's just take that little example now that I've explained that. So, if, we are, if we're at um, 1,000 Q and H, so we go 1,013 minus 1,000, we end up with 13, okay? 13 times 30, so 10 times 3 is, say, 300, and another 3 times 30 is 90, so that's 390 feet. So the effect of a 1,000 Q and H is 390 feet. In other words, now because we're taking off um, at low pressure, it's going to be like having 390 feet extra altitude, okay? Because in low pressure, the air is less dense, therefore there's less lift available. So in this situation I've just given you, the pressure difference of um, a Q&H of 1000 is going to be the equivalent of 390 feet. Now, what would the equivalent, the pressure difference be of, say, 1,010 Q and H? So it'll be 1013 minus uh, 1,010, which is um, 3. 3 times 30 is 90. So the effect would be, it would be like taking off from 90 feet higher. So you can see the bigger the variation we get from that, the more the effect is going to be. Okay? And the other thing you need to take into account is what happens when it goes up. So when it's... 1,000 and say 23 Q&H. So that would be 1013 minus 1,023, which is minus 10. Minus 10 times 30 equals minus 300. So the effect of having a Q&H of 1,020 would be, it would be 
we would have more air density available, more lift. So it would be like taking off at 300 feet below the level that we're taking off. So if you were taking off out of an aerodrome at, say, 1,000 feet, it would be the equivalent of taking off at 700 feet. Okay, so that's pressure height. And it is just done, you get the, the altitude and the Q and H, you plug in this formula, which you need to rote, learn, say it over and over, do it over and over, write it over and over until you learn it. And calculate using that and that to get that number. So that is the effect of, of pressure on our, perform, on our aircraft performance, on our lift, due to air density. Now, what about the second part of this equation? We, temperature has a huge effect on uh, lift performance because of air density as well. Cold air is much more dense than hot air. Now, cold air being really dense gives us more lift, and it also means that as it gets sucked into the engine, it's more dense, so there's more air in there, okay, to put more oxygen to produce explosive power, so the engine is more powerful as well. But in this one, we're looking at the air density, okay, for our lift. So the eyes of temp means what is the standard temperature? Now, at each different elevation, we have standard temperatures. And I showed you that up here. All you need to do to understand that is come up here and plug in, change the altitude here. Here's the eyes of temp. Okay, so there's the standard temp, which is 15 degrees. This gives us our temp at each altitude. And all you need to do is play with this, and you can see what the standard temperature for 10,000 feet is. What is the standard temperature for 15,000 feet? Okay. What is the standard temperature for 50,000 feet where the airliners might get up to, or say 40,000? Okay. Minus 65. So that's the standard temp. And then what we want to do is do, we're just going to work out, is today hotter or colder than the standard temperature for the altitude that we're either going to fly at or take off at, or that we're currently at? Okay, and what that's going to do is tell us, you know, is our aircraft going to underperform or overperform because of temperature? So, the way we work that out is a very simple, two simple formulas. Okay, so you need, you need to memorize this formula and this formula here. Okay, so 15 minus 2 times n. Now, what is n? n is a really simple thing. It's the number of feet of 1,000 feet. So in this case here, we're dealing with 5,000 feet. So n is 5. There's 5 lots of 1,000. So we go 15 minus 2 times n. 15 minus 2 times 5. So 2 times 5 is 10. 15 minus 10 equals 5. It's, it's that simple. Okay, it's just a matter of committing that to memory. Now that gives us our standard temperature, that number there. Then what we want to do is look at our outside temperature for the altitude or elevation today. And we want to compare the temperature today compared to what the standard temperature should be. Okay, so all we do is we want the difference between those two numbers. So the difference between 5 and 15 is 10. And then what you want to do, this second formula is simple. Once you've got the difference between those two numbers, just times it by 120. Now there's just one little tricky thing here. You need to pay attention whether this difference is a positive or a negative number. Okay? Because you need to leave it as a positive or negative number when you multiply it. Why? Because we want to know, is this having a positive or a negative effect on our performance? So, let's take the eyes of 10 um, of, of 5 and a 15, and we've got a deviation of 10. All we do now is times it by 120. That gives us 1,200 feet. In other words, that is saying, hey, because today is way hotter than it should be, so it's 15 degrees instead of 5, at, that is going to have a 1,200 foot difference in performance on your aircraft. And then what we do is we go, okay, well, what was our difference in performance due to pressure? What is our difference due to temp? Let's add the two together and see what the total difference in performance is, and let's call it density altitude. And that's all it is. Okay, it's that simple. Now, I'm going to explain a few other things to try and help it sink in. So, if you remember it as a three-step dance, it's much easier. Okay, remember I said you have to associate things? So, a three-step dance. Step one, find your pressure, altitude, 
pressure height using this formula. Step two, find your deviation by comparing the standard temperature to today's temperature. And once you have the deviation, times it by 120. Step three, add the two together. That's, it's that simple. Okay. So in other words, the effective pressure um, and temp makes it like taking off at 6,290 feet compared to the 5,000 feet that we're actually taking off at. Now let me just reinforce that with another example. Okay, so if we take off, if our elevation or altitude is 25,000 feet, okay, so we're flying at that altitude, we're not taking off at it, and our Q&H is 1025. Now 1025 means the pressure is higher than normal, higher than the 1013. So in other words, the air is going to be more dense, there's going to be more lift available. How much more? That's the new pressure height, okay? So even though we're flying at 25,000 feet, because the pressure is higher, we use this formula here, okay, to work out what is the effect. The effect is like we're flying at 24,640 feet. And I've got a little explanation there for if you forget. Now the second thing is this, the eyes attempt for 25,000 feet, just using the calculator up here, okay, or calculating it yourself, using the 2n formula, which is 15 minus twice the number of thousands of feet. So 15 minus 2 times 25, 2 times 25 is 50. 15 minus 50 is minus 35. Okay, compare that to the current outside temperature today, which is minus 10. Straight away, your ears should prick and you should go, hey, that's way warmer than the standard temperature. I'm going to have way less lift. Okay, way less performance. So 120 times the deviation, the deviation is 20. 120 times the deviation is 2,400. In other words, today, due to the temperature being so warm, we are going to be like flying at 2,400 feet higher. Okay? So even though the pressure's high and we've got more lift available, the temperature's high and we've got less lift available because of that, the net effect is we are flying at 27,040. How do we get the net effect? We just add those two numbers together. Okay? So today, because of the Q&H being high, and the temperature being high, it is like flying, instead of flying at 25,000, it's effectively like flying at 27,040 feet. Thanks for watching today, guys. Now, if you want to join up, there's a link down there, and you should join as soon as possible, because that's going to give you the maximum benefit going towards your exams. Now, the other thing is this. Please drop us a comment, drop us a like, or drop us a share to let us and Facebook and YouTube know that this content is on the mark and that it's what you want and what helps you pass your exams faster. Thanks for watching pilotpracticeexams.com where you can pass in half the time.